Hey everyone, Duan here. Nice to see you all again for what I think will be my last video about my Peace Corps experiences. It's not that I don't have a lot more stories to share or some useful advice, at least I hope it's been useful advice to share. It's just that um, I think I just want to finish it, I suppose. I think I've talked about a lot of major points and I think there are so many other great Peace Corps stories out there from other people that you should perhaps go looking for as well to get different points of view. Uh, in this video, I really just want to talk about what was the best thing about Peace Corps and what I was always bothered by by Peace Corps and it still affects me to this day, I suppose. Um, let's start off with the good. So the best thing about Peace Corps, and you know, one of the reasons I joined, was that I wanted to have a super, super unique experience. Um, get out of the stereotype mold of you know going from college to career, and go do something that no one else is doing while still helping people. And I will, I'd hope that this experience would you know give me a different perspective on life. Um, it would show me like what I'm capable of, you know, doing on my own, and just see how effective I could be at helping people. And I hope by now you've realized that I did have a really unique experience. You know, I was, um, gosh, how old was I? 21, 22, um, living in a rural village of 3,000 people in West Africa, in Guinea, having to learn a new language to work in, having to try and get around with another language to just go to the market, um, being in a country with just 20 other young Americans who were all kind of facing very similar things, that was a super unique experience. You know, um, I really only have those few other volunteers who have gone to Guinea and have been in other countries in West Africa to to laugh about all the problems we had, um, you know, the Oopsie Poopsie Club, to Amoebas, to taxis, um, turning off as they go downhill and you're wondering if you'll make it out, because you can't get out of the taxi, you know, there's probably a goat in your lap and the driver strapped uh, another goat to the car door so you couldn't get out even if you tried, um, to to pianos being strapped in there with you. <laughs> you know, those experiences I could talk about all day and unless you've lived it, you could never really appreciate what it means. Um, the fact that I was in that small village uh, going to work every day to work with kids, to work with other people who just wanted to make a good life for themselves, you know, you get that unique perspective too where you you can no longer see um, an entire country or an entire group of people as like this group because now you know the individuals. Now you know them. And when you when people start talking about, you know, groups of people, you know, there have been some bad things in the press uh, these last few years, particularly from um, a certain president, and you're like, oh, you know, what, where's the truth in that and where, where's your truth because you know you, you've been there or I've been there and so I know what's good, what's bad, what, how many great people there were, how many bad people there were and I realized like you know people are people and um, it was still different than what you can imagine because they're not your people, right? Um, they're my people <laughs> and those are my experiences and and that's what I think I really loved most about Peace Corps was that I got the chance to do all that, to to do things I that none of my friends, current friends, have ever done besides those Peace Corps volunteers. It's lonely too. Um, sometimes I, I just want to like bring up a story with my coworkers or friends, and it's just like they can either be nice and go, uh huh, uh huh, wow, that's cool. Are they just kind of like, oh, you know, none of this makes sense. Like, why, 
why were you biking 20 miles from home and you, how'd you get lost and end up at the bottom of a waterfall um, with black mambas around you? <laughs> like, well, how was this safe? What were you thinking? You know, you get all those different views and you know, they're, they're cherry picking. They're not able to appreciate the whole story, the whole experience. Um, but it's something I'm always going to value and it's, you know, I'm, I'm where I am today for better or worse because of it. And um, an experience that, you know, made me so much more mature um, and made me appreciate so many things, particularly uh, in grocery stores and, you know, Corona beers, things I couldn't get <laughs> so easily, uh, or at least I couldn't afford. And it will always give me, like, since in my current job where I do global health right now and looking into nonprofit, other nonprofit uh, jobs, um, it always gives me that sense, like, you know, where's my impact you know I'm here in Washington DC working on budgets and working on uh, procurement issues and it's like you know who am I benefiting and it's like I know who I'm benefiting because I was at that other end I saw my own company before I ever joined them um, in Guinea doing great work and it's like wow that's where that money's going that's where the people in Washington DC are are that's what they're doing that makes an impact and you know that gives me that great perspective and i think i said this before almost everyone in my company was a peace corps volunteer it's kind of funny um it's not even a, it's not a job requirement it's just like naturally like these are the people that show their passion the most these are the people that we know that you know they could live up to the mission of wanting to help others and so yeah that's what was the great thing about peace corps is that it's that unique experience um are you going to be a super good professional? Are you at, that you might have gotten from doing something else? Like you know, you're not going to be great at um, finance. You're not going to be um, a better biologist, better scientist necessarily. You might be a better um, business consultant, and you'll definitely be a better teacher. But again, it's a different experience, um, and it's that difference, the uniqueness of it that I appreciate it. So yeah, that was probably the best thing about Peace Corps. And all those memories that are mine, you know, that are unique to me. Uh, the worst thing is, it's not the, that, you know, Peace Corps is underfunded and there's that bad, uh, you know, lack of oversight a lot of times. It's not that a lot of your colleagues might be fresh out of college and might still have that college mindset. It's not even that you're in a necessarily a poorly developed country and you don't have access to a lot of things. Like, you know, people get homesick. That's natural, even if they move to a great job in a developed country with all these amenities. Um, people get down for all those things. What always bothered me about Peace Corps, because, you know, I, like, I understood why it was underfunded. It was just people don't appreciate it as much as they should. Um, what, what bothered me was, I'm going to read you some headlines. Peace Corps mourns the loss of volunteer. That's one. Peace Corps mourns the loss of volunteer. That's two. These are just random. Peace Corps mourns the loss of volunteer. Three. Peace Corps mourns the loss of volunteer. That's the fourth one. And then just going into the first paragraph of some of these, uh, Peace Corps director so-and-so is saddened to confirm the death of Peace Corps volunteer. Peace Corps director is saddened to confirm the death of so-and-so. And I could go on and on and on. Um, that language doesn't really change. And what it's referring to is that over the last 40, 50 years of Peace Corps, Around 200 volunteers have died. Um, a lot of them have been, they've died in car accidents. Uh, that's a typical way, you know, especially in some of the countries where there might be high up in the mountains or people just, there's no laws, they're driving around in poor vehicles. A lot of volunteers get sick and they get, they don't realize how sick they are until it's too late. 
Um, you know, I almost went out that way. It's what bothers me is that is that Peace Corps has this prepared first paragraph and headline that is almost identical in every single case. It's it's a lack of you know humanity to me, and I don't want to ever see Peace Corps. I don't want to ever see any aspect of Peace Corps as lacking humanity. Like I understand it's a you know a semi-government agency, and to make changes might require an act of Congress. Um, but I I don't think it's difficult to just change a few words to make to make that first paragraph to make those headlines seem a little bit more organic. Um, yeah, and you compare you compare the Peace Corps press releases. They typically always quote the du Peace Corps director. They rarely quote the country director. You know, the the one person, the one like higher up official who might have known the volunteer. Um, they might pitch together some descriptions, but they don't even get quotes from other volunteers who might have known that volunteer. Um, it's just people who, you know, weren't there. This this person, you know, signed up to volunteer anywhere from with the response volunteer a few months to several years of their life for Peace Corps and they died. Um, and Peace Corps responds by this robotic response that really lacks a lot of effort. And um, that bothered me a lot when during my service there were several volunteers that had died um, either recently or um, during my service, none in Guinea. And I think there was like a car accident in Mozambique where I think five volunteers were injured, two died or something like that. And, um, and another one in another country. Yeah, I think it might be another in Peru. They, I just, it bothered me. Like, you know, I was thinking like, wow, what if, what if I went out? Like, what would they say to, it's like, oh, Peace Corps mourns the loss of volunteer Duane Robinson and the acting director is saddened to confirm, you know, it's just, those aren't the words like I want to hear from someone who said they cared about me and they cared about my work. And sure, the rest of those press releases, they might be fine. They might be a little bit more organic, um, but that's just something that really bothered me, I suppose. Everything else, you know, the poor funding, um, the lack of oversight, uh, that's nonprofits. <laughs> that's basically, even though Peace Corps is not really, it's a weird organization, uh, nonprofits um, are filled with a lack of oversight, but a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of great enthusiasm, people that want to do good work, and <laughs> for better words, just don't know how. Um, and <laughs> Trying to audit findings are, are horrendous for nonprofits just because they don't have the resources. But you know, it's at least for most nonprofits, they're pretty human. Um, I if someone died in my organization, for instance, I feel like they would go above and beyond to recognize that person. Um, they would dip into private funds. They would pull funds together, whatever they could. To, to make sure that those end of life services or funeral services went over well and like the other person's family was taken care of or at least appreciated. And I think that's what it goes down to is that appreciation for all the work and devotion you give and the risk that you take. So yeah, if anyone at actual Peace Corps um, watches this video. I hope you somehow convince your communications department and director to just change that awful language that is seen on the press releases and stories of so many fallen volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's the end of this video series. I hope uh, you guys really appreciated my experience about Peace Corps. Um, if you have any questions about joining or you want to know more, um, please reach out to me either here in the comments um, on uh, 
Facebook, on Instagram. I get messages quite often from people and I like those a lot. I like responding to them. And please, you know, if you're interested, just watch a few of my videos, watch a few other people's talk, make sure it's the right choice for you. And um, try not to regret it if you don't decide to do Peace Corps. You know, you only have one life to live and and you just got to do what's right for you, I suppose. Um, if I were to do anything next, you know, I want to continue working in at least a nonprofit or a nonprofit like space, I suppose. And I just want to keep helping people and trying to make an impact, trying to do what I can to to use my privilege and to use my enthusiasm to improve people's lives. All right. So again, thank you so much for watching these videos. Um, thank you again for all the nice messages. And uh, keep in touch. Bye, guys.